this broadcast. All right. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone that's here and everyone that's listening in. Uh, we're going to start a new teaching this week. I know we just finished up, uh, what do we, oh, Kingdom Leaders. Uh, uh, I guess that was our summer series. <laughs> I made it up like our summer series. Uh, but we're going to talk today, uh, Days of Heaven on Earth. That'll be our topic today, Days of Heaven on Earth. And let's go to Deuteronomy 11. Let's open up there. It's actually one of my favorite topics. So I'm going to be pretty excited about teaching this. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 11, verse 21. It says uh, that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which uh, the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. It's talking about the promised land. And he says, as the days of heaven upon the earth, as the days of heaven upon the earth. And let's go here, uh, Hebrews 11. Set a little foundation for this. So Hebrews 11, we'll start with verse 1. It says, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Emphasis, evidence of things not seen. Underline it, highlight it. Evidence of things not seen. We'll drop down here, verse 3. It says, through faith... Uh, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen, uh, see, underline, outline things which are seen, were not made of things which do appear. So basically saying the things that we see were created by the things that we can't see or things in the invisible. And then if we drop down to verse... We'll do uh, verse 24. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ. And we're talking Moses here. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. Underline, highlight, as seeing him who is invisible. Yeah. All right, so let's we go to Genesis 1. Genesis 1. So Genesis 1, 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we talk about that a lot here. Heaven and earth, that means uh, the word and is a conjunction. That's he created them together, not heaven or earth, heaven and earth. So in the beginning, God created heaven and earth to operate as one, right? And then... Uh, in verse 2, and the, and, the, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The message says, first this, God created the heavens and the earth, all you see, and all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, and inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the water, the watery abyss. All right, and then uh, let's do, we'll do 
verse verse 4 well verse 3 it says and God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning was the first day and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters that, and let it div- divide, the waters fr- divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament uh, from the waters which was above the firmament. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning was the second day. Right, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear as it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw it, and it was good. So here you got, he created heaven and earth, but he broke down his whole process of, of what he created to operate once again together. You drop down here, verse 2. Chapter 2, verse 25. So this is after he made man. Mm, let me see. Well, verse 20, 21. It says, And God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, uh, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which God, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And she, uh, she shall be called wom- woman or womb man because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And and it says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Key word, they were not ashamed. Right? And you'll see here, verse chapter 3, this is after they ate of the fruit that they wasn't supposed to eat. Verse 7, it says, and the eyes of them were, the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. All right? All right, so, so here I, we walk through a few scriptures here, quite a few. Uh, so we walk through uh, Deuteronomy 11 where it says, as the days of heaven on earth. As the days of heaven on earth. Deuteronomy 11:21. All right? Then um, we went into uh, Hebrews, and Hebrews talked about uh, the value of faith, what faith does for us. Faith, Hebrews 1, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So it's, it, when we put on our faith lenses, we actually see outside of the earth realm. So in the beginning, you didn't need faith. We were living in heaven and earth. After sin, uh, after sin, all mankind could see is the earth realm. They were blind from the heaven realm. How, had the heaven realm was in a blind spot. So now we need faith to see heaven and earth together. Remove faith, all we can see is earth. So that's why people are stressed out with finances, with their future, with their promises, with their careers, with their opportunities, is because they can't see beyond the scene, right? Right, so, so then we went into Genesis 1, which uh, we call that in, the, in seminary or biblical terms or the, theological terms, law of first mention. When God first mentioned it is what, what his intent was. So in the beginning, the first scripture, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth together to work together, right? Then in Genesis 2-1, we talked about, uh, well, I, I didn't read Genesis 2-1, but it said God 
was finished with the heavens and the earth and all the host of them, all the population of heaven and earth. Then, he, then we got into some of the how some of how he created the heavens and the earth. Then we showed something that was key in Genesis two twenty five. It said, and they were naked and unashamed. Well, why were they unashamed? Because they were in the so you see, again, heaven and earth was together. So even though they were living in earth, their view was the presence and the glory of God. So they were so consumed in the glory of God, they couldn't see that they were naked. They weren't focused on themselves. After they ate of the tree, after they sinned, they couldn't see heaven no more. So there was nothing that was more glorious than them looking at their own glory. You understand what I'm saying? Before sin, the... Just seeing the glory of God, there was nothing more glorious than the glory of God. After sin, when you can't see the heaven realm, you can't see God and his splendor, then at that time, what's the most glorious thing existed? Man. More, more glorious than the creatures, more glorious than the birds. Like, just seeing themselves was phenomenal. Like, sometimes you look in the mirror. <laughs> Yeah, just looking at yourself is phenomenal. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, Adam saw the woman. He said, whoa, man. <laughs> so so we'd be looking at the mirror. We're going, whoa, man. <laughs> right? All right. So, so we talked about that, and we said uh, after sin, they were focused on themselves, right? And I gave you the scripture how in Hebrews it says what we see, Hebrews 11, 3. Uh, the things that are seen were created by the things that are not seen or in the invisible. So that means if the invisible has created the visible, then what's more of a reality? The invisible, right? So, so but we live like the invisible or the heaven realm is the fantasy and what's on earth is the reality. Well, why is it that everything that we see changes so fast? Subject to change. Man, go back and look at your pictures up to this point. Look at how much change has taken place in your life, even in young, young folk, 15 years. Go, go back, just go back f five years ago, look at what you was wearing. You wouldn't wear it now, would you? <laughs> right? So why? why? Why is things because the scripture says, don't look at the things, 2 Corinthians 4.18. 2 Corinthians 4.18. 2 Corinthians 4.18. Because you got to search the scriptures to see if this stuff is so. So it says, don't look on the things that you see for they're temporal. Look on the things that you can't see for they're eternal. Temporal means subject to change. Everything that manifests has to submit to change. So let's say uh, somebody uh, this week woke up in the morning and they saw a growth on their arm that they haven't seen before. Yeah, you know, that's kind of scary. You know, you see a little growth. Yeah, but the fact that it's manifested in the earth realm, it's subject to change. It has to submit to change. That's why when you say by your stripes is, you're healed, you're speaking heavenly words or over an earthly manifestation. So it has to submit to change. Right? The things that's eternal doesn't have to, you know, but God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Because God is on the outside of time, Isaiah 50, God's sitting on the circle of earth. He's not bound by time. He's not subject to change. God hasn't changed we look at God as changed because we have. We think he's a different God because we're different people. We're looking through different lenses. So we think God has changed, but we're opening ourselves to, up to stuff we never did. And the more we open ourselves up to the world, it's like eating that fruit in the garden eating all over again. The more we eat, the blinder we become to what we really have access to. Let's go to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. Uh, I love this scripture. Um, Ephesians 1 verse 3. It says, blessed be, the God, the, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, look, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So, so, so we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And we talked about this a uh, Maybe I got to reteach it, but uh, I forgot what the title was. It was uh, Blessed, Bless Something, Blessing Something. It's, it's, 
I think I taught it to other church. But but the thing about a, a blessing is it's a it's a it's God's verbal endorsement. Now remember now when God speaks, things move. So it's like God's blessing is out ahead of you, his favor and everything's out ahead of you. So it's opening doors before you get there. But suppose God has it now now God wouldn't be smart to bless you where you are. He would be smart to bless you where you're going. Because we said everything that's manifested is subject to change. So why would he, so, so it's one thing, you, uh, uh, you guys teach the players in basketball, I used to tell them, don't throw the pass where they're at, throw it where they're going. Because you throw it where they're at, they're not staying there. <laughs> they're in motion. So, so one of the reputations I had at every level was I would, the pass would meet people where they're at. So the coach was like, well, he, I, I was playing with this program team and the coach kept saying, Boy, he throws that ball in advance, doesn't he? And I, and I used to be thinking to myself, as opposed to what? <laughs> I got to throw it where the guy's going. But the defense can't recognize it because they can't react fast enough. By the time they react, the, the person's caught the pass and they react. Well, similar to God's blessing on our lives. God is blessing us where we're going, right? And so if he bless you where you're at, you're moving from there. <laughs> God's a better point guard than, than Pastor Keith. He's throwing that bless, blessing out ahead of time, meeting you where you're going. Now, but imagine, and we, I say this when I'm playing, yo, move, man, cut, right? You know what I'm saying? So, so, so it's crossover, you know, the guy's playing defense. This guy's coming to double me, but I'm about to throw that, that pass, that, that pocket pass, you know, in that lane, but this guy don't cut. So I threw the pass where he could score. I know I'm talking basketball here, you know, right? But, the is, but that's what, so, so that's God. You know, God done crossed over, he done made his move, right? But he's playing it off like he's going this way, but he really wants to throw that pocket pass through, that, through, through here so you could score in your life. But you ain't moving. You ain't cut. You still standing there. He's throwing a blessing where you're going. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But if you stuck because you don't believe and you have no faith and then you sitting there standing in the same spot complaining, going, well, God don't love me. Well, you don't love you because you ain't moved. <laughs> Blessing waiting on you, right? But you got to move. But you ain't going to move if you don't see it coming. You know, one time, the other thing is when you're playing with players that, that don't pass, you don't have no incentive to cut. Go to, you know, cut is, you know, move towards the basket expecting them to pass you the ball so you can score. So you're like, man, I ain't going to pass the ball. I'm not going. Then they throw the ball. They're like, well, I didn't think he was going to pass it. Well, what I'm trying to tell you is you don't have to worry about that with God. God's saying, when you make the move, the blessing be waiting on you right there. Right? Right? Just make the move. Right? All right, so we, we slipped that in. <laughs> you say, hey, man, Brother Keith. <laughs> that sound like us at the house, right? <laughs> I'd be like, thank you, my sister. <laughs> She'd be like, thank you, my brother. <laughs> yeah, ever since, ever since she got that fro, we be like, right on, sister. <laughs> right on, my sister from the motherland. All right, so, 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 so this is the thing. Um, this is, see, see. All right, come on, come back, come back. All right, so. All right, so we have these blessings, and the blessings are, are there, but it's hard for us to see them because they're framed in the invisible. But when we put our faith lenses on them, on, we can see them clearly. Faith is the substance of things, hope for and the evidence of things not seen. So, so they're realer, realer, there's probably no such thing as realer, but let's just use realer just because it's not a word. Right? <laughs> All right. So they're realer. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, though, even though it's not, it's not good English. But uh, then what really appears to you? Right? All right. So, so, so now, now I'm making a case. I'm, I'm, it's a setup. I'm making a case because I'm going to give you all a chapter and a verse here. All right. So let's go to Matthew 10. Uh, Matthew 6. I'm sorry. Uh, we've talked about this here before. Uh, the Lord's Prayer. And this is a model for prayer. So, so, so Jesus is breaking down to the disciples. Man, let me just show you how to pray. 
and I'm going to give you a foundation of how to pray with the cover. I want you to cover glorifying God. I want you to cover the, your people around you. I want you to cover forgiveness. I want you to, you know, forgive people as you want them to forgive you. But, but listen, it's all about the kingdom up in this piece. Like he closed it out with, we can do all that. But let's not forget, it's all about the kingdom. And here's the Lord's Prayer. He said, uh, Matthew 6, we'll start here at uh, verse 9. It says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Now, he, he wasn't saying you had to pray this specific prayer, but you can. Because this prayer covers everything. But he says, just this is your foundation for prayer. It says, um, our Father, just focus on God first. You always hear me. When I'm praying, I'm always, uh, Lord, we lift you up and magnify you. Because I'm focusing on the Father first, right? And, and uh, it says, which art where? In heaven. It says, hallowed, hallowed. You're like, is, is, hallowed be thy name, thy honor. Hollow is like, it's so magnificent. It's so big. It's, it, but, but that word name means honor. You know, uh, if you pray anything according to Jesus' name, his honor, right? It says, so hallowed be thy name. Look. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, where at? Earth. In earth, as what? As it is in heaven. It says, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, we've given debtors, leads not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is kingdom, power, to glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> All right? But it says, in earth, as it is in heaven. So, 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 so. If we go back to his original plan, heaven and earth to be created together, then sin separated heaven and earth, not, not like ripped it apart, but they lost sight of heaven. So all they can think about is earth. Now, and we can relate to that. You know, uh, this bill collector, this is called a house. Oh, you have to pay such and such. Some people's first thought is panic. Why? Because they're panicking based on the demand that's been placed on them that they don't believe they can meet. Right? All they can see is the earthly bill. So they're making decisions based on what they have, not based on what God has. But if we, if we're, if we got our faith lenses on, we can see Ephesians 1, 3, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So we'll be praying for it to be on earth as it is in heaven. Right? So now we're not, so the bill is placed under the demand on us. We place under the demand on, Right? Cattle on a thousand hills, exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think, right? Pour out blessings we won't have room enough to receive. Opens up what? The windows of heaven, right? <laughs> right? So, so we're accessing things on earth from things in heaven. See, the original plan in Genesis was for us to enjoy the things of heaven on earth. That's why they were created together. Adam messed everything up. Adam and Eve, we know, you know, you know, we got, you got one was deceived and one was rebellious. I'll let y'all figure out who was who. Right? <laughs> right? So, but they, they were deceived and rebellious in cheating God, robbing God from the opportunity to continue to fellowship and pour out his, like, not just even, he, don't have, he ain't had to pour out his blessings. They were consumed in his blessings, right? He, he, we roll in, in the cool of the day together all the time. And that's why the scripture says in Malachi, shall a man rob God, right? And it talks about tithes and offering because what it's saying is you're making a heavenly move to pull from, you're making an earthly move to pull from heaven. You're giving me back the opportunity to pour out my blessings, right? You're giving me back the opportunity for us to operate heaven on earth, Okay. All right, so that's Matthew 6.10, right? And I gave you Ephesians 1.3. And this is why, this is interesting because somebody asked about this the other week. So I just, I'm just going to slip this one in here. It's kind of an honorable mention here. It might not be on the first team, but just honorable mention. Uh, so Romans 4.17. Romans 4.17. It says, as it is written, I have... I have made thee a father of many nations, it's talking about Abraham, before whom he believed even God who quickeneth or makes alive the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. 
Call as those things which be not as though they were. Why? Because God is not just looking at the scene. He's also, he's looking at the scene from the realm of the unseen. So even though he's calling things that are not as though they were, he's actually calling things based on how they really should be or how they really are. So we always talk about the, uh, um, uh, be not conformed, be transformed. And the Bible says you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free, right? Right? You shall know the truth. The word truth means final reality. Truth means final reality. Or, so the truth about that caterpillar is what? It's a butterfly. So, so when God is calling things that are not as though they were, that's God looking at the caterpillar and calling it a butterfly. Because he sees from the heaven realm in advance what we can be and what we're supposed to evolve into. We're frustrated, or as I was sharing with my family in New Jersey uh, a couple weeks ago or uh, the other Monday, I was sharing with them um, how uh, I, I, I made a crazy mistake the day that I fell out and took all those drugs. But I, made the, I was making the statement, I said, well, what's the worst that could happen to me? And then I used to say, it's not like I have anything to live for. I wasn't making that decision based on where I was going. I was making that decision based on where I was at, what I saw around me. So our depression, is it based on where we're going? Right. Our frustration, is it based on where we're going? Our hurts, our pains, and our disappointments, is it based on where we're going? Most of them are based on what? Where we're at. <laughs> right? And, 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 and what's so frustrating is, of course, you're not going to translate yourself in a second to where you need to be, but you can see where you're going if you just put on your faith lenses. Right? You can see outside of the realm of the natural into the supernatural, into the spirit realm. Right? Faith is the substance of things. And the evidence of things. Right? Substance of things hoped for, what you're expecting. It's, uh, we're going to uh, teach this on Sunday, the guarantor. Says faith is your guarantee <laughs> given by the guarantor. <laughs> right? Does that make sense? All right, so, so, and, and so, so Isaiah 46.10, you can write that down. You can write down Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3.15. And then we'll visit both of those real quick. Isaiah 46.10 and Ecclesiastes 3.15. We've discussed some of these scriptures before, but they make a lot of sense based on what we're talking about today. So 46.10 says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things, look, that are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Look, declaring the end from the beginning. And, it, and it's, you know, and I gave you this example before. People do it all the time, you know. Uh, been around a lot of, 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 of counsel of people that build, have, have dreams and visions or people that have built projects. As, uh, my best, uh, or one of my best friends at the time in, in uh, Ohio, he was, uh, he built the, uh, uh, it was a six million dollar building, sixty six thousand square foot building, and so so I, I I listen to to what they do. So they what they do is they build a model, and then build the model. So 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 here they have blueprint. The blueprint is saying this is what we're going to build. Well, it's not it's not existing. And then they build a small model of what how it's going to look of what we're going to build. You know, Marcus does this. Uh, uh, he's actually. Uh, is creating renderings of the future Ayers Christian Center Church, the, the when we build, right? And so, so he can do it on a computer where it, you can see how it's going to look. But Marcus is way ahead of the building that we're about to get, right? <laughs> right? But, but the interesting thing is, what is Marcus doing? He's declaring the end from the beginning. And then, so when they go in to build, they build them based on the blueprint, right? They're building, and then they're producing what's already been built. Right? Well, 
when God declares there from the beginning, he's doing the same thing. Your life has already been built. He's already uh, designed it. And he's built it. He just needs you to follow the plans. Right? Matthew uh, uh, 7.13, you know, is a narrow way. So sometimes when we've allowed the adversary to creep in and give us something called stubbornness and pride. Well, well. Before the stubbornness and pride, remember when you, you know, you, you see this in your kids all the time. <laughs> and you see this in your kids all the time. Like your, your kids, actually kids come out, you know, I think about Carter and Austin, uh, both, but really Carter. Like, basically, you know what? Carter's walking around with faith glasses on. If you just hold a conversation with Carter, how is Carter? Have a conversation with Carter. Carter would be talking about stuff that's going to happen in your life. He'll be talking about stuff. And you'd be like, how old are you? Are you from here? You know. But what it is is if you listen, which I listen to everybody, this kid has his faith lenses on. Now, as he grows, if he stays protected, guard your heart with all diligence. If he stays under protective custody, he'll just constantly look by faith. He'll, he'll dream dreams, see visions, achieve things no one has ever done. But let's say he, you know, he runs across someone, this is not going to happen to Carter, but he runs across someone and he decides he wants to smoke or drink or get caught up in lust and stuff like that. Well, what happens is the more he gets caught up, his lenses are sliding off. And, but but it's, not, it's, not, it's not an abrupt slide like, I can't see. No, no, it's subtle. It's so subtle that he'll think he's still seeing. But he's missing out on the most important things in his life. So suddenly he's created blind spots and he don't even realize. And guess what? When he's talking to people, everybody else is tripping. He'll find himself locked into something that he can do, but not realize he's locking out what he was purposed to do. And he's just wondering, why, why is there a void? Why is there a void? Why am I frustrated? Why am I thirsty? Why do I need all these vices? Because when you're doing something that you can do, but not what you purpose to do, what you can do, you can get success, but you won't be fulfilled. So now you'll need all these other vices to almost simulate fulfillment, but you're still not, they, they ain't quenching your thirst either, right? And so you got to keep your lenses on. I mean, I mean, we're young. We believe in all types of stuff. I, when I grow up, I'm going to be astronaut, whatever the case may be. But now, we so prideful, we so locked into the one job because you get promotions and people getting you props. They calling you boss. You done lost sight of your dreams. Right? So, so just, 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 I just want to slip that in there for a thought. So God declares the end from the beginning. And then Ecclesiastes 3, if we could slip over there real quick. We've visited this scripture at Ayers Christian Center Church before. But Ecclesiastes 3, verse 15. And it reads, it says, that which has been is now. So that which has been is now. See, remember, if God was out ahead of you, what I'm, what I'm, what I've, see, he threw the pass ahead of time. So he threw a pass from the, he threw a pass from where he was at to where he was going. So that which has been is now. Right? And then it says, and that which is to be has already been. And God requires that which is past. Uh, the the uh, Amplifier says, so history, his story repeats itself. Right? And so the thing is, you can lose sight of what God's doing. When you, you ever, uh, those of y'all wear glasses, you ever lose your glasses? Pastor Melanie, you ever lose your glasses, <laughs> but you still operate as if you can see? You know, so like you could be talking to somebody and you're assuming how their face is. I ain't going to say no names. Thanks for tuning in to today's broadcast. To view videos or make donations, feel free to access our website at www.heirscc.org. Remember... At Ayers, we believe we're just what you prayed for.